sports fan. You are, and, and I'm kind of not. But uh, how did all the sports thing? I mean, sports. How did that all that happen? How did this interest come to you? Well, my mom died when I was eight, and so my um, father raised me, and yeah. he's a sports fan. And I have a little brother, and my brother's really not into sports, but I was into sports. So I found that it helped to bond with my dad. And through my father, I learned the language of sports. And the Wait, language yeah. of sports. Okay. I was going to say, with the language of sports. Yes. So this means that it's, it's a vocabulary, and um, it is a, a platform to speak to other sports fans in a way that other people that aren't into sports won't understand. So it's definitely a language. If you understand the vernacular of sports, if you understand who um, sports icons are now, what the sports uh, topics of the day are, what the sports controversies this week are, then that gives you an opportunity to talk to other sports fans in a way that non-sports fans probably don't understand. But as a young girl, I realized that I could talk to boys and I could um, share my views about sports and I had a secret language that other girls didn't speak. And I learned that from my father. Who is your best friend now? Who's my best friend, yes. I speak to him every day. Which is tremendous. He's Absolutely. in his 80s now and, and he's amazing. Former, former social worker and worked for the Salvation Army for many, many years and now he's a consultant for the Salvation Army. He's a fundraiser. And he's my best friend. But he's still doing stuff. I oh, love yeah, that. He's still you know, working. I'm in Naples and my dad's 87. So, but he's in Missouri. Okay. But hey, anytime I'm seeing anybody in that age group actually still working and doing and achieving and creating stuff like that, I'm all into that. Not only is he still working, he's doing photography. He has a drone, so he does videos. He walks on the beach every day. He lives in Huntington Beach, California. So, which is where I was, you know, raised for part of my childhood. Part was in San Diego, and then we moved to Huntington Beach. But my dad is extremely active, so that's, I feel blessed. Okay, so for some reason, I trip over saying your last name. Guerrero. Guerrero. Yeah, I, yeah, I almost feel like I want to put six, so Lisa, obviously, I've got that. Guerrero. Mm -hmm. Guerrero. If you're Latina or Latino, you can go Guerrero. If you can chill, <laughs> I chill, chill your arms. I, I know yeah, you yeah, can yeah, chill them. I was, thinking, I was <laughs> on a show called Best Damn Sports Show, period, for uh, several years with a bunch of jocks. And John Sally, a basketball player, couldn't say Lisa Guerrero. And none of them could trill their R's, so they just started calling me Lisa G. So you can call me Lisa G. Well, I need to like call you Lisa Guerrero. I need to call you by your real name. But Guerrero. Anyway, okay, I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. We are in Arizona. You rocked my world today. Lisa Guerrero, you were one of the best speakers I have ever heard. And before we sat down to start this, I find out you really haven't done this presentation before. This is the first time I did my Being Brave speech. So this is, a, a, like technically I guess I call it a keynote speech, um, but I've never done that before. I've hosted events. I've been on TV my entire life, and yeah. I've, you know, emceed, but I've never done a keynote speech. And people for years have been saying, you know, you've got this amazing platform on TV. Um, you talk about empowering things to women and young girls. You really should be a speaker. And I have never formally done it. And the last year, I really started to develop this concept of talking about being brave. And I have had these four steps that I use to be brave in my life as an investigative reporter. Right. And before that, as a sportscaster. Well, with, let's clarify, with Inside Edition. With Inside Edition. You've been there a long time. Yeah, I have been there a long time. I've been with Inside Edition since 2006, and I was promoted to Chief Investigative Correspondent in 2010. So I've been chasing bad guys for nine years on Inside Edition. So I really use these tools of courage every single day in what I do. And I just thought it was a message that people could use, whether you're a man, a woman, a young kid, older person, everybody could be more brave. I felt weak compared to you, and I don't say that in a bad way. No, no, I don't say, I, I actually left it, I looked at my friend Linda who said in the room, and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a wuss compared to her. I, <laughs> I, I, you know, you said you have to do what you do, you have to not be afraid of confrontation. Correct. I hate confrontation. Most people do, it's ugly. But it doesn't, what, how do you do it? How do you justify it? You're fighting for the little guy? How? Because you, I mean, I've seen the videos. I've seen all the stuff. I watch you do, do the show. Yeah. You know, I, I watch you, you know, uh, chasing the people and, and shouting out the questions, and they're ignoring you and walking off and walking off. And I've seen, you know, 
how do you do it? How do you go for the confrontation? How does it feel? Why do you do it? What? It must be done. Somebody has to stand up for people that don't have a voice. I have a platform, I have a voice, and I'm brave. And if I don't use my platform, and if I don't use my gifts, that means that somebody's gonna get away with something they shouldn't be getting away with. I use what I have been given, either through the gifts of God or my family or things that I've developed for a reason, a, spe a specific reason. And I didn't know what the reason was until recently, I'm 55, and it took me you know, 40 some years to realize that this is what I should be doing. I need to be a conduit for viewers to see that there can be somebody that fights for them, that you are not alone. If somebody hurts you, if somebody rips you off, if somebody uh, takes your life savings, if somebody takes the home that you live in, if somebody has hurt your child, has killed a loved one, there has to be somebody that will say, I'm gonna listen to you, I'm gonna fight for you, and not in a way that's gonna, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but what I am is a journalist, and I wish more journalists would be advocates. For but you're people. a journalist with compassion. You're a journalist with empathy. The whole concept you were talking about, as far as journalists should be dispassionate, that's no. not you. No, I, I, I completely reject that that entire premise. Well, I don't think bad guys deserve that. They don't. The and bad guy is the bad guy, and I don't see you just going to try to right the wrong for the person's been hurt, you're trying to empower them to speak up for themselves. You can't fix everything. No, all I can do is ask questions. All I can do is is shine a spotlight on things that I feel are, are hurting people. Yeah. And because of the spotlight that I've been given on this platform on Inside Edition, I'm able to, uh, to really force people to have to now, they don't have to answer my questions, but they have to listen to my questions. Okay. And I'm going to chase that, them down, okay, and I'm going to make sure they hear me the, ask that questions. That those questions are being asked. You cannot pretend that, that the public, there's at least Lisa Guerrero is asking that question. Therefore, other people are going to be asking that same question. You can't avoid this forever. Right. That's And that's it. And, and that's what they are really trying. Look, if you're a scam artist, if you are a crooked politician, if you have hurt or assaulted or murdered somebody... What you want is to get away with it and not have anybody call you out. My job is to call you out. People pull guns on you, Lisa. Yeah. And, and you're having a conversation with somebody with a rifle. I would wet my pants. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I just, I, it's one thing to watch you do this on TV, and I'm familiar with your work. It's another thing to set across from you knowing that you have done it. You said today you would take a bullet to I, right the wrong. I would. And and again, I'm not saying this is not a job that everybody should do. Most people probably should not do this job. But I feel very passionately that people need to stand up for others. Um, there was an incident with my boyfriend. We were on a plane, and somebody was very abusive to the flight attendant and called her a racial slur. And everybody on that plane was silent. And... My boyfriend and I had been split up. He was in the back, so he couldn't hear it. But I was right next to where this man did that. And I absolutely let him have it. And finally, once I did, then the rest of the plane started saying, yeah, that's not right. And they kind of jumped in. But the point is, we can't let people get away with hurting others. And we can't just say, well, it's not my problem. You know, when, when people have a phone in their pocket, that means they are a potential journalist. You, you had a term for it. You called it... Citizen journalism. So, yeah, citizen journalism. I mean, yes. And we see it all the time. Yes. And, and that is why uh, abusive cops aren't getting away with what they used to be able to get away with. That's the reason why people in grocery stores aren't able to scream at somebody with a Latina um, last name or with an accent and say, get out of my country. No, there are other people there that are going to pull out their phone and they're going to say, that's not right. Stop being racist. You know, we have the responsibility as human beings to other human beings to stand up for people that don't have a voice. How, what's your best advice to those people who don't have the good fortune of sitting across from you to empower them to stand up on the plane? So I challenge every single person to commit a random act of bravery every day. What does that mean? That means when you wake up in the morning, I want you to do one small thing that requires some modicum of bravery that you wouldn't normally do. Whether that means being the first person to raise your hand in class 
and answer a question that you're usually shy about you know, answering. People have a thousand opportunities every single day to be brave. And most of the time, people choose not to be brave because they don't want to put themselves out there. They don't want to feel rejection. They don't want to feel the sting of, of being the center of attention. But if you start to make small random acts of bravery happen for yourself every day, then tomorrow it's easier. The next day it becomes easier until finally you will wake up and you'll be a brave person. I believe you can teach yourself to be brave. You can practice bravery and one day you're going to wake up and it's your automatic go-to position. You're going to see a wrong and you're going to right it. I've interviewed a lot of people. It's one of the coolest things I've ever heard. Thank you. I, because I've never heard anything like it. I, I've just quite literally never heard anything like it. I've heard random acts of kindness. And I, that's kind of my thing. My thing is kindness and respect yes. and all that kind of thing. And can't we love each other and get along? So you're a little bit the antithesis of me, but I think you're who I want to be. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that, and I think, I think more people should be like that, but I, I, I'm not the guy that's ever going to, I mean, there's different ways to look brave. Okay. Would you ever jump out of a plane? Yes. I want to oh, of course you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think I would jump out of a plane? <laughs> no. No, okay. it's never going to happen. But there's different kinds of brave. Definitely. What I'm saying is it takes bravery to ask for a raise when you know you deserve it. It takes bravery to stand up for somebody that's being marginalized and you know it, but you're scared to do it. It takes bravery to do that. It takes bravery to be the kid that sits next to the, the person that nobody wants to talk to at lunch. It means that you could be seen as uncool. That takes bravery. There are a million ways to be brave every day. We normally choose not to take those chances because we want to protect ourselves. You're making me rethink the entire way I live. I mean, seriously, you're making me rethink the entire way I live my life. That's kind of huge. I hope so. I mean, I thank you for saying that because I I try to live like I told this you every I was day. Gonna gush. I told you that I was very, I really was so blown away. I'm so, I knew you were working anyway. I was so impressed by you, but then to actually see you in action and hear this and now know that you're graciously sharing this with me one-on-one -on -one, I gotta do this you have to do it and I, mean, I gotta report back that I did it yeah of course I'm and not gonna jump out of a plane don't make me jump out of a plane no yeah no, don't do that if you don't want to know I just mean you know we as human beings have a responsibility to ourselves and to others and it's a lot easier to slink away from from confrontation, right? And just like you said, most people hate confrontation. Um, and I used to too, I was I mean, not I a brave kid. I hate confrontation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had people go, you live sort of a Pollyanna life or Pollyanna attitude. Mm, don't really love that. I don't believe in fighting unnecessarily. Right, and I, I'm not saying to pick fights, but what I'm saying is if you see a wrong, don't be silent about it, speak up. And it helps a lot when it's not just about you. If you see somebody that's Can I being, say yes. what I'm thinking of yes, though? Of course. If uh, anybody who knows me, if I see it wrong and it's done to me, I'm gonna be taller for a little bit, but I'm gonna fight back if it affects me or if it affects someone I love or my kids. Where you're going is the person but you the, don't the, know. the what would you do show on whatever yeah ABC, ABC. John Chimeros, yeah. I think. yeah that what would you do and I watch for example that show and I wonder what would I do I'd like to believe I'd be the brave one if it if it doesn't impact me or a loved one am I still gonna do it mm -hmm. but you you will be that person if you practice it so again it's it's one of those weird things but I did not you know come out of my mother's womb as a brave baby. I was not a brave kid. I lost my mom when I was eight. I was extremely shy and introverted and scared of my shadow. I became brave because I practiced being brave. I lived in my head, I had a huge imagination, and I used to act out and role play that I was Wonder Woman and the Charlie's Angels. And Linda Carter and is, Linda she's Carter the right is Wonder the Woman. Okay, Wonder she's Woman. the Wonder Woman and Charlie's Angels, I knew all six of them. Yeah, right. All yeah, we're the same age, yes, so I knew yes, all six of them. Yes. There's not just three, there's six total. Exactly. So, and, and I watched every episode, and they were, and they, they chased bad guys, and I would pretend I was them until it got to the point where I became a little bit more outgoing because I was practicing and play acting being like them until one day my brother, who's two years younger than I was, got beat up by the bully in school. Something inside me snapped, 
I chased after that bully and I beat him up. And nobody ever touched Richard. This is again. elementary school. Elementary school. And he, 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 he stole the lunchbox? School. He stole yes. the lunchbox. Yes, he stole my brother's Star Wars lunchbox. Very important detail Wait, there. Yeah, that's very, no, that would have been a big deal. <laughs> but big deal. I know the era we're not discussing. Yes. No, 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 no. Don't touch the Star Wars lunchbox. Right. And you went back. And, and I beat him up. And I became the superheroes, the crime fighters that I was watching on 70s TV. I became those women because I practiced being like them. And then I became like them. And here's the weird thing, going full circle, I am now the woman on TV that young girls are watching chase bad guys. So there's a whole new generation of young girls that I hope are watching me chase bad guys. But you know what else you're doing? And I, you may not be aware of it. Young boys are watching you chase bad guys and that's normal to them. Right, yes. And you should see how that many, is yes. normal to them. And that's important. Of course, a woman can do this because the, Lisa Guerrero does it on TV. I see that all the time. I remember um, we're at the same age when we were growing up. A single mother, divorced mother, was not was something that would be whispered about, talked about. Then all of a sudden, we had one day at a time. Right. Yes. And there's Anne Romano, and she's got these two daughters, and she's raising them on her own. Then all of a sudden, it became okay. Because we were taught at our age that that was okay, that was normal. The, the influences that kids see on television and, and now on YouTube, because a lot of kids don't watch TV, they watch YouTube and they watch what they want to watch on their devices. So Inside Edition is extremely popular online and my investigations were viewed last year alone 120 million times. On YouTube? On YouTube. So, so all your stuff's on YouTube. Anyways, it's all on so YouTube. People can see all this stuff. And they binge it because one comes on after the next one is over. So you know you can see them back to back to back. You can binge on them for hours. I've done 500 investigations. Oh my God. So, so I can do like Lisa Guerrero. <laughs> like I could like totally binge you and like watch you all day long. You could. Fight bad guys. It's possible. And I might do it. And Little kids do that. You know, <laughs> I'm a big kid and I might do that. <laughs> okay, so my com I said to you my quote unquote complaint, and you're solving my complaint. And I'm not saying this, you know, I, I love the show, I respect the show, Inside Edition has been on forever. I just like seeing you. And I said to you, I want to see you more. Thank you. I want to know more about you. I'm getting that chance, but pretty soon a lot of other people are going to get that chance. Yes, so I am so starting. So tell us the announcement because yes, I'm real, For me, I'm pumped about this because this is solving my Lisa Guerrero problem. So, well, I'm starting my own YouTube channel, which is incredible. I really feel like I first of all, I have a message, and you heard my message today in a yeah. keynote speech. So, you know, people that watch Inside Edition don't get to hear that from me. And I want a platform where I can talk about being courageous and being brave and encouraging other people to be brave. So I'm going to be doing behind the scenes videos from Inside Edition where I'm you know, on surveillance or I'm chasing bad guys. So you can kind of see what goes on behind the scenes, but I'm also going to be doing original health and beauty investigations. I'm going to talk about being brave. Okay, what's yes. a health and beauty investigation? Here's an example. Um, I am really fascinated with the stuff women and men are putting on their faces, okay. in their hair. What, it, what goes into these products and what are the ramifications of the toxins that we're putting into our bodies? And we use it, we don't think about it because they sell it, so it must be okay. That's right. And again, we see people in the media, we see celebrities pumping and pimping out these products. Are they safe to use? So I'm going to be doing some product testing. Um, I, one of the investigations that I just shot is me doing microblading. That is a procedure that a lot of women are doing. It's like eyebrow tattoos and it's all the rage. I did it and I developed a staph infection. And I go through that process on camera to tell people about how dangerous this could be. Um, and I even went to a registered nurse to have that, my procedure done and it ended up with me in the emergency room. So there are a lot of things that I'm investigating and a lot of things I'm shooting that you won't see on Inside Edition, but I know there's an audience for it. I also am a huge crafter. I do mosaic art and I wrote Which, a book. Okay, so yeah. this is like this is totally bang, 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 who tough, 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 tough. And oh, by the way, look at the little piece of glass. Yes. I mean, that's which my balance. I, I love because everybody is so many different sides. Right, and, and with what I do, which is very stressful, art is my complete and utter meditation. Art is something that I do. I have an art studio where I live and I go into my art studio and I break glass and I cut ceramic and I make everything from large mural size 
mosaics to small little giftable mosaics and I've written about this and I'm doing tutorials for my YouTube channel about this so you can learn how to do it but I really think that everybody has an artist inside them and if we uh, tap into I'm that. I'm 100% there. Don't it's you like agree? you went to theater camp as yes, a kid. Yes. I, uh, to me, uh, the arts made me. Yeah. I don't necessarily I have the ability as an art director, which I do, to tell an artist what I want for, for example, a client. I have no talent whatsoever myself. You have a vision. I have a vision. My stick people are, my daughter's art was better than mine when she was five. No, seriously, it was better than mine. But our, I am who I am because of my arts education. Right, and, and I think we all have it. We're all musical, artistic people if we can tap into that like children do. So that's because the, you have to be creative to do what you do anyway. Creativity is creativity, and how am I going to catch it? I'm a storyteller. Yeah, but you have to creatively think: How am I going to pull this off? How am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. And feeding that creativity to the arts. Yeah, you know, I mean the soapbox, soapbox. But this is my thing, and it was yours too. Feeding that creativity to the arts is helping you investigate. Right. Yes. Look at things a different way. Yes. So, is there a specific launch date? I'm looking at July right now, and I think that's the best timing for me because, um, you know, TV is this crazy cycle that starts, our launch every year is September for the right. TV season. And then we have November sweeps, February sweeps, May sweeps, and at the end of May, we get a big chunk of the summer off. And so I'm in the process of filming about 20 videos for my YouTube channel, and I'll be doing several a week once we launch. So I'm going to have a lot of content on there. Right now, I'm rocking and rolling and doing a ton of content so that once people subscribe to Lisa Guerrero YouTube, you'll be able to click around and have fun and see a lot of different types of videos. Some fun, some serious, but I think you're going to really get a takeaway if you go to my channel well, and subscribe. You're a mosaic. You. I am a mosaic. Yeah. You really are a mosaic. <laughs> Everybody is a mosaic. Do you, do you know why? I mean, I love to ask this question, why? You're brave. Well, why did you go why what in you who was the role model was it Charlie's Angels what caused you to be the person who fought for the little guy well because I was connected to the first little guy that I had to fight for which was literally my little brother Richard yeah. when he was getting beat up so as I got older I just realized that I had the ability to um, to stand up for people and that most people didn't want to do that so I could see there was a niche for myself doing that when I uh, became a teenager and became more outspoken, I was discovered as a model in high school. And I started modeling at 16. I did my first national commercial at 16, a Ford Ranger commercial. So I earned my SAG and AFTRA card at that point. And I was very uh, comfortable being on camera. So I was able to take the skills of being comfortable on camera, but standing up for people into what is now my full-time career as an investigative reporter, but I didn't plan it. I loved acting, I wanted to be an actress, so I became an actress, well, you and I became a sportscaster. You've done everything you ever wanted to do. I did, have, I've done have, everything. Have you done everything you ever wanted Every to do? Every single thing, so far, yeah, yes. Which is amazing. Now, where does your investigative mind come from? Because that's related to bravery, I believe, but it's different, because we're kind of in a world where facts don't mean that much. I mean, let's face it, somebody can, can form an opinion on a hashtag, Seeing that shift, does that frighten you? Does that make you more determined? No, I'm going to be the role model that shows about gathering facts. Yeah, I, I we're living in a really scary time. Very scary time. There are a lot of people being marginalized, and we live in a world where, um, frankly, um, when you're being told that the press is your enemy from the President of the United States, and you are hearing that... Uh, facts don't matter and that what I'm doing is fake news frankly that's scary because journalists aren't your enemy we are you we're your friend we're your neighbor and it's not your responsibility to be you know puppy dogs and bunnies and cotton candy it's not your responsibility to, to always agree you've got to say what it is and factually back it up that doesn't mean everybody's gonna have to like it that's right and look, I come from a background where my dad is a social worker and my mother is an immigrant. My mother came here from Chile. She didn't speak any English. She was a teenager when she came here. She had me and um, I am definitely a product of both my parents, a social worker and an immigrant. 
And so when I see people being marginalized, especially in the immigrant community, I take it personally. Well, there you have it, that you're, you're your parents. Yes, I'm my parents' daughter. I mean, if you really, my daughter majored, and my daughter Mary Beth majored in social work. So I kind of followed her through that path, and I get that path. And there is a desire and need of calling to be able to care for people. And even though you lost her young, she somehow loves that with you. Oh, yes, definitely. My dad says that to me all the time. You are your mother's daughter. She would be so proud of you. You look like her. You act like her. Um, she was a strong, strong, strong Latina woman. And um, I think my dad really sees her in me. And people that know him also see him in me. So I, I think I have the best of both worlds. What can we do to get people to understand that investigation and facts and finding out both sides before you make it? We, we form an opinion that comes out of our mouth. We do. We all, I mean, Twitter, you said something. Social media exists. Because people are angry. Right. And it's explosive. Which, of course, Happy Me wants to not believe that. You said that today. I went, well, I can't argue. Yeah. I, I can't argue. I believe that so many people are on social media to vent. People see things around them. They see things on television. They read things in the newspaper that make them angry. And they feel like this is my way. This is my little corner of the world where I can make a difference and I can say how I feel about something. And a lot of it is negative. It's angry. But it's up to us to listen to people that are angry. People feel marginalized. People feel like they're not getting, look, they're working very hard for their dollar. And they're feeling like they're being ripped off, that their tax money is being uh, misspent, that uh, people are being hurt in their communities and, and there's nothing they can do about it. And the most that they can do is to speak up on Twitter or Facebook. And so I feel like it's up to us to listen. And Should there be rules? Or are you just saying it's yeah. all okay? No. It, it's all okay. No. You're, I, I agree. I, what I'm hearing, I'm going to be more tolerant about what I, I'm going to be more accepting of, okay, I'm going to read this and I'm going to try to put myself in their shoes. Right. I mean, because I'm not terribly called tolerant of the negative on social media. I'm against it. Mm -hmm. mm, but that's narrow-minded in its own way, too. Because if I'm missing a message that I need to be getting... And that's that person's only way to disseminate that message that I'm not doing, giving them a fair shake. I think a lot of the anger comes from hurt. I think people are hurt. I and think a lot of act actions come from hurt. Yeah, they do. And so, you know, look, I, I certainly don't tolerate, nor do I um, support anybody being abusive on uh, social media. And when people come on my social media page and they spread lies or propaganda, I quickly unfriend them block them because I you know I won't be a party to sharing and spreading um, lies frankly but that goes against everything you believe in <laughs> so yes but I do want to, to try to listen to people and that doesn't mean I'm going to agree with them but hopefully through an example through me being an example they can see oh wow you know here's somebody who's in the media who who is really putting her money where her mouth is she's doing what she says she's going to do for other people she's not just talking about it spouting off she actually goes out there every day and tries to make the world a better place in the in the only way she can I'm, 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 you're everything. I mean, to, to do everything you want to do to help people, to answer my need. I, there needs to be more Lisa. I'm so grateful for the YouTube channel because I've gotten a lot. I've gotten to know you. I've gotten to know that you have so much more to offer. And you are a role model waiting to burst under the scene in a way that I don't think you probably even believe possible. I believe that. I think you are going to help a lot of people with this channel and the more you speak because you just rocked my world today. And as a speaker, I had to follow you. <laughs> and Lisa Guerrero, that kind of sucked. <laughs> that was really, really tough. That makes me feel good. Thank you. <laughs> I was sitting there going, really? Did, I mean, literally the first thing I said when I got up there, I said, well, this would be a lot easier. She had sucked. <laughs> But I mean, I but I was so what kept me from really going over the deep end. No, I I was fine because I was. You were so engaging, and I wanted to hear everything you had to say. And now you have more ways to tell it to all of us. I'm trying. I'm, that's oh. what I'm starting to navigate and figure that out. Thank yes. you, thank you, thank you. What a joy! I hope we do this again. And 
I will, I will do anything I can. Random acts of bravery. Yes, Randall. Random acts of bravery. Random Commit it every day. Of, yeah, short of jumping out of a plane. I don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Okay, no. we're good. Yes. Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, I'm, it's a lot of love, but I kind of lots of love her. No. <laughs> I mean,